the attitude of my community to people that are, have gone to school, uh, they normally call us Wajinga because once we go to school, we disconnect from this kind of life. And as well, uh, the most heartbreaking thing is that sometimes we, the educated people in Samburu, take part in fueling the conflicts. After, uh, during the COVID-19 period when we went back, when online classes were ongoing, I did not have a computer, I did not, I could not afford the data, so the best, um, the best way for me to adapt to that was volunteering even more. So I, I led a team of COVID-19 response in Samburu, uh, where we were disseminating the information of COVID-19, uh, how we can collaborate with the communities. Uh, we were collaborating with the Ministry of Health and the communities to make sure that uh, we curb the spread of the virus. Uh, we really, it really created a very big impact because Samburu County was not that affected because we were on the ground. Uh, so uh, I was very humble to, to be leading, I was leading a team of very big people, the school, the school heads, uh, school head teachers, uh, experts in their own way, uh, but I was just a first year who had run away from a tough life of Nairobi to come and volunteer. So, uh, and uh, uh, when uh, we resumed classes, online classes, uh, in May, yeah, in May, I tried my best. I registered three courses. Uh, we were given a maximum of three, of three because it was like a pilot. And uh, when I registered, I tried my best. We were promised some bundles that were never working. I, was, I used to borrow uh, a computer from uh, my colleague. We were working together in Samburu Doctors Plaza. So when I came back, I was working in Samburu Doctors Plaza and during my free time, I go and volunteer uh, in Kenya Red Cross Society. Yeah, so uh, Mary uh, was giving me her laptop. I used to go study in the morning and then uh, give her the laptop back. And uh, there were these bundles that uh, Safaricom and Tangaza had partnered to, uh, to offer us 10 GB at 500 shillings. I bought. Unfortunately, that was the, the only amount I had at that time. These bundles were never working, so I was not able to do uh, as much as I anticipated and uh, the much that the school uh, was also expecting from me. So I, I got two courses dropped because I did not finish uh, the assignment. There were so many assignments, uh, so I remained with only one course. So this one course, uh, I could now manage it well because sometimes uh, uh, you, uh, you just use a little cash to attend one class and uh, some time to do the assignments and all that. And in, in the same year, by the month of May, the International Federation of the Red Cross rolled out uh, a program where young people from across the world would uh, think of uh, something that is affecting the community in relation to COVID-19, how the virus has affect, affected the community, and come up with innovative ideas of helping the community recover from the effects of COVID-19. Yeah, so they were taking uh, 500 innovative ideas across the world. I did my application. I submitted two innovative ideas. One of it was focusing on uh, reproductive health because um, our research had informed us that uh, the teenage pregnancies during the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, during the homestay, uh, during the lockdown period, uh, a lot of students uh, got pregnancies. It's because the environment of staying together afforded them the time to create relationships and fall in love and that is how the pregnancies came out. 
So uh, our intervention was on providing reproductive health education, uh, providing sanitary towels to the uh, uh, teenagers with uh, uh, coming from poor backgrounds because that was also one of the of the reasons why they could easily be lured into a relationship because someone is going to buy you some sanitary towels. So that was our intervention. And the second uh, innovat innovative idea was uh, using now this water step tool, we were trying to help the community because by that time, COVID-19 was not uh, fully uh, out of uh, our lives. So we were trying to make sure that we educate the communities uh, and we give them the tools. We give them uh, the innovative tools so that they can promote their hygiene, they can promote uh, their sanitation, and as well, uh, they could engage in a uh, business of selling bleach because once we trained them, we gave them the tools and uh, they, they could engage in business. So our focus was on promotion of hygiene and sanitation, uh, providing health education and enhancing livelihoods be, uh, through uh, training them on how to engage in business and uh, sometimes create uh, avenues for them. Yeah, so we trained schools, uh, we trained uh, religious centers. We were focusing on places that attract large numbers of people. So that is how we chose the schools, the prisons, the religious centers, people living with disabilities, and uh, children's homes, rescue centers. Yeah, so all these places, we trained them and we gave them the tools. And uh, one of the most uh, touching uh, story was that of a, a special school called uh, Senea Special School. Uh, this school holds a number of uh, people living with disabilities children, uh, that are mostly children. So uh, most of them suffer cerebral palsy and they soil themselves more often. So the environment needed some intense sanitation. So we gave them our tool, uh, the one that we were giving out, would make uh, five liters of bleach using salt and water. Salt uh, worth 20 shillings, and uh, water, five liter, and uh, uh, electricity or a car battery. So when we gave them this one, this one was not enough to cover, uh, to cover their, uh, their needs. So they requested for another one. Uh, we placed the request all the way to uh, uh, to the executive in the U.S. They shipped a 20-liter bleach maker, uh, specially for Senea Special School, and they have been doing an amazing uh, job. Their environment is now uh, a, a very good one. They have been reporting that diseases have reduced in their children because they now have a safe environment. They even engage in bleach business because they sell uh, the bleach around uh, the institutions that they partner with. Yeah, and uh, the, pro the program came to an end in uh, December 2022. And that same December, uh, I was awarded as the Youth Volunteer of the Year for Kenya Red Cross Society. Uh, because I had, I had done a number of a number of things with Kenya Red Cross, uh, the the pr the project that r just ended in 2022 December uh, was bringing together three partners. Uh, the key partners were the International Federation of the Red Cross, Kenya Red Cross Society, and Water State. So uh, that is how, and it was always my dream to bring these two organizations that I volunteer with to bring them together in uh, in their various areas of convergence yeah and that is how it turned out i was awarded as the youth volunteer of the year uh, 2022 and this award recognizes a young person uh, who has uh, endeavored uh, uh, to 
who has endeavored to volunteer uh, in Kenya Red Cross and ad advance the agenda of Red Cross, a Red Crescent movement, uh, uh, between the ages of 18 to 30 years. So uh, that is how uh, it turned out. Yeah, for Baragoy, uh, first of all, I would like to acknowledge uh, the good work that uh, the government is already doing in Baragoy. Uh, Baragoy be being prone to banditry, uh, it has really been affecting our, our lives, our livelihood, our education, our spirituality, because sometimes you cannot, you cannot go to church uh, simply because the area is not safe. And uh, we got uh, a leader that was elected in 2022. He has been, he really has that energy to, uh, to bring peace to Baragoy. And we already, we already testify that Baragoy is now safe than before. So, and uh, using that platform, I feel like education can be a very good tool uh, to end this uh, menace because uh, when, once someone is educated, once I am educated as leader, I cannot go back to that kind of life, you see. And also uh, the religious centers also play a very important role in, uh, in curbing uh, that banditry because most of the time uh, religions play a very important role in uh, affecting the attitude of people. Yeah, so as a young leader, as a young leader, I, I endeavor to, uh, to create a platform where uh, I can take part in be it campaigns uh, and uh, uh, be, be it campaigns here, yeah, I can take part in things that can really help people go to school, take their children to school because up to this age, uh, we still have that lifestyle of once uh, a child is born, the, the most bright one who can count goats very well takes care of the goats. And that one who cannot uh, do anything, who is just there, is the one who is taken to school. So that is why the attitude of my community to people that are, have gone to school, uh, they normally call us Wajinga because once we go to school, we disconnect from this kind of life. And as well, uh, the most heartbreaking thing is that sometimes we, the educated people in Samburu, take part in fueling the conflicts, you see. Now that is where uh, the religious centers have to come in and instill values in people, you see. This person has this education, but uh, they still are connected to this kind of banditry. So the religious center has to come and change a person so that they can have uh, that uh, uh, attitude of having dignity for human life because a human life, uh, dignity for human life is inherent for everybody. Everybody deserves uh, dignity, to be treated with dignity. And, uh, by doing so, we can cut the number of people that are just killed in cold blood and no, uh, no apparent uh, follow-up or investigation normally happens. Uh, someone is just killed and that is it. And you can do nothing, you see? And uh, that is why education and uh, the values that we draw from the churches we go to the values that we draw from uh, the mosque we go to or any uh, religious avenue that we, uh, we go to is very important. Yeah, so uh, for me, I am a member of the Ministry of Repentance and Holiness and based on the values that I draw, I draw from that, uh, from that uh, institution, it is what has really helped me to this far because my character, my personality, how I treat people is what I draw from this. And as well, the education also plays a very important role. So uh, it is also very important for people to, uh, to know what they can draw from uh, wherever they fellowship. Uh, someone, uh, our national youth manager for Kenya Red Cross Society, 
Alex Ayub always tells us that young people uh, have energy, we have time, but unfortunately we don't have money. Yeah. And uh, our senior citizens have the money, uh, but they don't have the time and the energy that we have. So, uh, what am I trying to say? The energy and the time that you have as a young person, uh, use it uh, to impact your community. Use it to touch a life near to you. And use that time and the energy that you have to be useful to your own family, to your own parents, your siblings, and your the church you come from or your religious center that you come from, uh, use that energy to be useful to the society at large that you come from, to the nation, and uh, take part in volunteer opportunities. It is through volunteerism that I'm here today. I'm seated here telling my story because I began volunteering with Kenya Red Cross Society uh, uh, around six or seven years ago. And uh, that is what uh, really made me stand out even in the interview for coming, uh, having the scholarship in Tangaza University. And uh, that is what connected me to Waterstep. And by the way, uh, at the end of this year, I may also represent Waterstep in the United States of America. So uh, the energy that you have, uh, the time that you have, use it to serve your community. You can volunteer, there can be no money at the moment, but it will pay back. It will create networks for you. Kenya Red Cross Society has been a very good platform for me to create networks. Uh, and those networks, I've always tapped on them and made sure that they are useful to me as I am useful to the next person. The values that I also draw from the Ministry of Repentance and Holiness have been very instrumental to me and they have, they, it is what has helped me to navigate myself through my volunteer work in Kenya Red Cross Society.